glory held down. Then we go into our family thanksgiving after the message. Let everyone get ready for it. So our thanksgiving. A white envelope will be given to everyone. Please write the name of your family at the back of the envelope to carry your sacrifice of praise. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory held down, part three. That is where we are going to. I made us to understand that many, many people in life that ought to have fulfilled purpose and destiny, their glory was held down. Held down. Like the courts that was tied down. And Jesus said, they should go and loose him. This court was meant to carry Jesus in his triumphant entry, but he was tied down, held down. So he can't fulfill destiny, he can't fulfill purpose. So if we are going to be what God has created us to be, we must be released. We must not be held down. We must be, our glory needs to be activated and we must know what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and I've begun to tell us some factors. Factors that can hold people down. Factors that can hold you down. Factors that can deprive you of fulfilling God's purpose. Number one, what did I say? Those of us that are following me. Number one, what's the first factor that can hold you down? Yes, Thank you, sir. The wickedness of the wicked. That is the first thing. Because the world is full of wickedness. People that have seen your glory, they have seen what God wants to make you, and they want to make sure that you didn't manifest it. The Bible says that the whole world lies in wickedness. You don't know even the people sitting beside you is even planning your downfall. Because the heart of man, the Bible says, is wicked. Today I pray for you. The wickedness of the wicked in over your life today, let it end. Amen. You better say a good amen. Amen. At the activities of the wicked, anywhere around you, today it will stop. Amen. And whatever the enemy have done to hold you down, whatever the wicked people have done against you, against me today, the Lord Almighty will destroy it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Then number two, ungodly foundation. Ungodly foundation. Please, those of you that are not here, or you are listening to this message for the first time, write these factors down. Ungodly foundation, there are powers from our root. There are power from our source. Power saying that nobody has ever rise up. How would you want to rise up? Power that makes the servant to rule over us. Why we supposed to be held Head, but we are tail. Right from our foundation, especially those of us that are parents worship idols. If you are from idolatry foundation, so you, that idolatry power will hold you down. If you are from a polygamy foundation, that power will be saying no to you because in a polygamous setting, People have, the people have lost their life because this one will say that this one will not rise. It's my children that must rise first. I want to pray. Any foundational factor holding you down, holding your life down, let that power release you now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever is your foundation, anything injuring you, injuring me from fulfilling destiny, today we are released in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. The number three, Thank you. Me negative mental attitude. Negative mental attitude. Number chapter 13. And from verse 1 downward. These people were sent to go and look at the land that God is giving to them. But when they got there, they look at themselves that they are like grasshopper in their own eye. They say we are like grasshopper in our own eye. They themselves say they are grasshopper. So I told us that the way you think, the way you feel, the way you behave will go a long way in your life to become what you ought to become. Your attitude in life, your thinking in art, in life, it, it, it either makes you 
or breaks you. So you must have a positive mindset, not again, not a negative mindset. Don't have a grasshopper mentality. If you see giant, it's what you want to become. To you, seems impossible. Oh, you feel that your power cannot get it. That should not say that you can't get it. People are making it. You too, you will make it. Amen. Amen. If people are building mansion, don't look at yourself that, ah, you can never get it. Who told you? Even when God is going to start with you, your own can be bigger than them. So your present condition must not dictate your future. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Don't use your present condition to dictate your future and you are feeling bad and you are feeling small and you are feeling inferior to people that have made it. You are not inferior. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Today you may have just a single cloth. A single cloth. And the cloth is fading away. That does not mean tomorrow you will not be giving people thousands of clothes. So don't ever look down on you, on yourself, because your mentality goes a long way. I knew a man, this man wore a single cloth for years. And he, he, he was washing it, pressing it, one, and the black trousers that turned to white. He said one day, his shoe, he wants to go and mend it to a shoemaker. That he should help me to shine. And the shoemaker say, what do you want me to shine or do in this shoe? This shoe is worn out. Say the shoemaker threw the shoe. Go and look for something doing. Today, this same man is giving thousands of shoes out. Thousands of clothes out. One day, this same man that I'm talking about, give me, me alone, about five shoes. Give me about five suits, clothes. I can't count them. This was a man that don't have anything before. This now a man that built houses all over, that have estates, that have in Nigeria, that have all over the world. So don't have mentality that you can't make it in life. If somebody is big, don't be inferior before them. Don't be inferior. Don't look down on yourself. Just say, my time is coming. Can somebody say, my time is coming? My time is coming. A songwriter says, if I am using empty thing to drink Gary today, you know that some people that drink Gary, they just hold their hand, not in their hand, though, but so that you can feel that they are taking something with Gary, they will just do like this. Nothing, no. Empty something. Say, that does not mean that tomorrow I will not take the lap of a chicken to take Gary. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. So don't be so... So desperate or those so depressed that you say you can't you can't rise. Can somebody say I will rise? I will rise. Say no matter what I'm passing through. No matter what I'm passing through. Today, today, my tomorrow, my tomorrow will be better than today. Will be better than today. So it all depends on your mind. People that committed suicide, do you know why they committed suicide? They feel that they can't make it again. They feel that that is the end of their life. And that's why they cry. They will be crying. They will be crying. When they see people, when they see their mates making it, instead of them to thank God for their life, they are crying. Instead of them to say that, I'm going up, I'm coming up, I will be greater than you, I'm be rejoicing. Instead of them seeing their future, they are seeing their presence. And that's why they destroy themselves. Can you see your future? Is your future brighter than yes, today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why you see me bouncing? I'm rejoicing every day because I've seen it that my tomorrow will be greater than today. And you, every one of you, you will see it. You, you will testify. I say you will testify to my Amen. glory. Amen. I too, I will testify. Amen. I will say that there was a time that you are like this, but today, see what God has done. Amen. Your song will be see what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. See what the Lord has done. Hey, what I'm waiting for I come to pass. See what the Lord has done. That will be your testimony. Amen. And number four. Association barrier. He that walketh with the wise men shall be wise. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. I told us you must know people you work with. 
work with good people. Check the company you keep. If they are not people that can make you progress, please separate yourself from them because your company matters. Your connection is your collector. Number five. Dwelling on your past mistakes. Yes, dwelling on your past mistakes. The devil don't have the right to keep afresh the wound of your past. Yes, you may have learned a few lessons from your past since you have repented, restituted, we are necessary, and you have turned a new leaf. So don't brood about your past. Your past is dead. Your today is bright. Your tomorrow is colorful. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, remember not the former things, oh, neither yes. consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. If you have made mistake in the past, forget about the mistake of the past. You have repented. Move forward. If the devil is trying to tell you that you can't get it because of what you did, you are too evil. You have done this yesterday, and today you can't make it. Tell the devil, that was my past. I've repented, and I move forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Number six. Disobedience. Disobedience. So disobeyed. It's first Samuel chapter 13, verse 1 to 4. He disobeyed, and God col collected the kingdom from him. He's supposed to be a king, his generational king, but the kingship stopped from him because of his disobedience. So don't obey, just obey God. Don't disobey, just obey God. Nineveh was where God asked Jonah to go. Where did he went to? He went to that Tashish. And the, and, and the fish swallowed him up. So please, disobedience is a grave sin. It's like a sin of witchcraft. So those of us that are having this spirit of disobedience, who, who are you? You are a witchcraft. You have, you, have, you have that power of witchcraft inside you that makes you disobey. So don't disobey instruction because in your obey instruction is your lifting. And number seven, wrong, wrong environment. environment. Wrong environment can hold somebody down. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 to 8. It talks about many seeds that were planted in rocky ground, in stony ground, and other environment. So where you are planted talks a lot about where what is going to happen to you. You may have good seed in your hand. If that seed is not in a good place, it cannot grow. And that is why I pray for someone that if you need to change your environment, change where you are, where you are working, today God will change that environment for Amen. you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number eight. Destructive habits. Destructive habits. There are some habits that cannot help us, some character. Habits like taking alcohol, smoking, gambling. Or people that spend without even thinking about tomorrow. You spend, say, I will spend everything today. Tomorrow, I will, another one will come. It's not like that. So, you must have good habits. Immoralities can elongate your problem. So, the earlier you disengage from any habit that is not profiting you, the better. And if you know, I told you, if you know that you need spiritual help in some area, or you need medical help, Please, don't cover yourself up. Some people know that they have some habit. They can't help themselves. Cry out. If you need to be delivered, you'll be delivered. For deliverance, for prayers, don't just hide, hide, hide yourself and pre uh, pretend as if everything is right with you. You know yourself. And I know that God will deliver you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone with negative habit, destructive habits, and you can't control yourself. Let the Holy Spirit help you out in the name Amen. of Jesus. The number nine. Distractions. Distraction. Distraction is the enemy of distinction. So you must make sure that you are focused. One, the, 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 the weapon that the enemy used to bring people down, to hold them down, is that it makes them to, do, to, to, to be distracted from their purpose. This is what you're supposed to do. You are doing some other things. So focus. Do the right thing. Anything that is not bringing gain to you, don't do it. Be focused and do the right thing. Number 10, causes. In, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 25, and it said, Cause be Canaan, a servant of servants, it shall be. You must look into your life and pray very well. If there is any cause troubling you, 
if you have put every effort and you discover that you are not making it, it may be that it's a cause. Causes can elongate someone's problem unless you pray to God to break that cause. Everyone under the sound of God through me, any cause in your life, let it be broken. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. let it be broken. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number 11. Number 11. Organization and administration. That's where we are starting today, isn't it? Yes, we are going to look at another 10 and I'll be fast. Organization and administration. You must know this if you want, if you want your glory to manifest. Many people live purposeless life. And this is not the will of God. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 13. Proverbs 16 13 says, Commit thy works into the Lord and thy thought shall be established. Get yourself organized. Get yourself organized. Many of us, we are not organized. You just do this. You are not organized. Maladministration can be responsible for repeated and elongated your problem. It can make you to be held down. So every one of us, you must make sure that you develop yourself. You must be current. You must know what is happening. And you must organize yourself. Do things as you ought to do. Administration talks about organizing yourself and doing the right thing at the right time. You have to be a good time manager. Some of us, we don't know how to manage our time. Some people will be playing around when they're supposed to be doing something that is good. Something that will benefit that they will be playing, visiting, gambling, going to friends. So you have to organize your things. Today, this is what I want to do. That is organization. That is adm adm administration. Today, by morning, I will be here. In the afternoon, I will be here. This is what I will do. I want, to read, I want to read my Bible. I want to study. I want to learn a trade. I want to visit a friend. You time me. That is organization. So anything that is apart from that, if anybody is just coming and say, ah, Osas, let's go, let's go and watch uh, Man You. Say, no, this time I have a plan. This is what I want to do at this time. That shows that you are what? You are organized. Hallelujah. Amen. So nobody can just come and pick you. But if you are not organized, anybody can just come. Oh yeah? Lunch. Let's go and play. And you follow that person. But if you know what you are doing that time, you say, no, this is what I ought to do. It's not the time to play. Even the time you ought to sleep, you have it. That this also time I will be resting. So nobody can take your time. So organize your life. I pray for everyone that is disorganized. May the Lord organize your life for you. Amen. Number 11. The mon Okay, 12, 12. Good. You are following me. Demonic attack. What did I say? Demonic attacks are everywhere. These are the barriers erected by the devil and his fallen angels. Demonic attack can destroy one, can hold people down. Demonic attack causes problems. And you have to overcome them. One of the weapons to overcome demonic attack is our holiness. Holiness within, holiness without. And that is why you have to be very, very prayerful. Thank God for the vigil we had last Friday. It was powerful vigil. Please don't be missing prayers. Don't miss prayer because there are some prayers that that is, that is meant for you. Through prayers, you overcome demonic attack. So be very prayerful. The Bible says we should wash and do what? And pray. Wash and pray. Demons are, are flying around. Flying arrows. So when demons attack you, then your glory will be held down. I want to pray for someone. Any demonic attack fashioned against you, let it backfire. In the name of Jesus. Why is, this, why is it that any time that you have collected your salary, then something will just happen and you spend the money on not on unnecessary. Some people will spend it on sickness. Some people, something will just happen. They have a plan for the money, but something will just happen. It's an attack. Any attack that is draining you, 
any attack that is making you not to fulfill destiny today, let the attack cease. Amen. Let that be counter attack. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say any demonic attack. Any demonic attack against my glory. Against my glory. Say Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Arise. Arise. And destroy that and attack. Destroy the attack. Let it backfire. Let it backfire. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number thirteen. Number thirteen is what I call personal fault. This is not demon. This is your own fault. Psalm 19 verse 12. It says, Psalm 19 verse 12 says, Who can understand his errors? Said, thou cleanse thou me from secret fault. Listen to me. There, some of us, there are some things we are doing secretly, not known to anybody. It's not known to your parents. It's not known to your wife, to your husband. It's not known to your pastor. But there are some secret faults, secret things you are doing that you must stop. And these are self imposed limitations that are causing us not to fulfill destiny. We invite them ourselves. Because most of the time, you can't exercise self control and you are doing it. People don't know you are doing it. I read about a lady that was very fervent in the church. People know that this one is a good sister. A good sister in the hive of everybody. But she has a secret fault. A secret sin. She has an affair with somebody outside. Not, not even a Christian. And that day, and everybody in the church, in the fellowship, they praised this sister. One day, she's just finished sinning with a, sin, it's a, with a, it's a sinful partner. And she was going home and she was knocked down by a runaway vehicle and he died. And when they, when they were doing his burial, people, ah, this sister has made heaven. But that brother that committed sin was there. He was saying, ah, this, they didn't know this sister. They didn't know what happened, what she did, and that he met his what? A death on the road. So she was saying, ah, this one goes nowhere. It's not going to heaven. Can you see? It can cut people's short. When we were doing our outreach yesterday, I told us about somebody. This man sent away his wife, his legal wife, and went to go and marry one useless woman. And that, they were living in a small place. And he was, he, would be, he was serving that woman even as a slave. But because of sin, just last week, he caught another woman, another Olosho. He was on top of the woman. When he has asthma attack, he wants to take his asthma, whatever. Before he stretched his hand to get the asthma, whatever, he died. Who killed him? Is it, is it demo? Sir. Is it wishes and wizard? No, sir. He killed himself. So don't kill yourself before your time. Do what is right. So personal thing you are doing. What, look at what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 25. Jeremiah 5.25. It says, Your iniquities have turned these things away and your sin have withheld good things from you. So your iniquity, your sin, that secret fault, that personal error will withhold good things from you. What God's supposed to do for you, he will take it from you. And it can make you to die prematurely. So, Please, do away with any personal thing, any personal thought, sin you are doing that is known to you. Some of us, is, it may not be sin. It is laziness. When you are lazy and you want to make it, you can't make it. So it's not only sin. Some of us, when they, when they call you, come and do this work, say, ah, I am tired. Ah, I can't do it. You are too lazy. And do you see anyone that is lazy that will rise? Go and ask people. That have glory, they are making it. They are not lazy people. We thought that people that have money now, they will be resting. They don't rest. They work 24-7. Someone says he was traveling with Dangote in the air. That person is also a big man. He said, All the people in that aircraft, they slept. Only him and Dangote did not sleep. Langote was on his laptop, working. And the journey was eight hours on the air. So he did not sleep like this. He too did not sleep. But you, oh, after the service now, 
three hours sleep. You will wake up again, again. Eh? Another two hours you are working. Another three hours sleep. When they call, you say, I'm resting. Eh? Who's supposed to be awake? If not you, but because you are lazy. Come and do this work. Ah! I can't do it. I don't have strength for you too. So that is your own fault. Not God's fault. Not demon's fault. You have to wake up. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Some of us is stubbornness. You are too stubborn. Nobody can correct you. When you see people correct you, you say, leave me alone. No. That is me. I can't change. So it's your personal fault. You better change. Anything you are doing is secret. Or whatever you are doing that is making you to be held down. Today, let the Lord deliver you. Amen. <laughs> Number 14. Neglecting godly kingdom principle. Neglecting godly kingdom principle. See, let me tell you. In this kingdom, there are principles. This kingdom, this church, this kingdom of God, this Christianity is governed by principle because God is God of what? Principle. Many of us, there are some kingdom principles that we are not doing and you want God to bless you. You want God to answer your prayer. God will not answer you. It's not a cause. Some of us, you want God to bless you. You are, you are not following godly principle. You, there is no shortcut to it. One of the principles is in Malachi chapter 3 verse 9. Malachi chapter 3 verse 9, what this is? It says, you are cursed with a cause, for you have robbed me, even this nation. Huh? How can God say you are cursed with a God? How did I rob God? And God say, I'm cursed. Do you know what to be cursed? And verse 10, what this says? Say, bring all the tithes into the house, storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now. In this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will be not be room enough to receive it. This is from God. So you rob God when you are not paying your tithes. But some of us, you are saying God understand that even the tithe is not enough for me. So from your uh, 10,000 that you're supposed to give God, God say, give me your tenth. 1,000. You say, God, that 1,000 is too big for you. You can't even give God 1,000 out of 10,000. The one that gives it to you. So you can't be blessed. God says you are cursed already. You curse yourself by not what? Paying your tithes. When it comes to giving, the Bible says, give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, but you don't give. You just want to be received. He said, the measure that which you used to make shall be measured back unto you. I've never seen anyone that is a tighter, that is a giver, that is bankruptcy. They don't go down. They have more. They have more. They have more. Recently, in a group that I belong to, we are to give money, plenty money. And I have a project in my hand that I'm doing. I say I'm going to give 50,000. My wife said you can't give 50,000. It's too small. It's too small. He said you must give 100 or more than 100,000. I look at her face. Ah, you know what I'm doing. He said, don't give that one. Give more. I say, okay, okay. So I have to give. Some of us, your husband want to give. You tell your husband, don't give. Your wife want to give. You say, ah, that one is too much. Do you know? I gave I gave that 100,000 before the end of that week. God provided another money more than that for me. Hallelujah. That means if I've reduced it, the thing will have reduced. I don't even know that I gave. In fact, I, have, I even have more. I'm receiving more from that time. More are coming. That is the principle. Some of you don't give. You don't pay your tithe. That's why you don't have. You can't have. It's not a cost. I'm not costing you. Give your tithe. Say, no, I can't give tithe. Give offering. Say, I'm, I'm not giving offering. And you, you, it is not prayer that will make you to be blessed. It's following principles. Most achievers, whether in the spiritual world or physically, they get, they follow these principles and they were blessed. I read about a man. He said, I can't be giving God 10%. He said, we will be giving God 90%. Yes. I read it. Not even one man. He said, I will be giving God 90%. That means he has a faith, a bigger faith. 
and he started giving God 90%. If you have 10,000, he will pay tithe of 9,000. He will hold 1,000. And God bless him. With that, God raised his company. Me, I don't have that. My faith has not gone to that level. It's a, it's certain, it's a principle. God now looks, so you can give me this. Okay, I will surprise you. And God blesses him. Be, and he was still doing it. The way God was, he was still giving God 90%. But you, you can't give God 1%. Talk less of 10%. That's why you are being held up financially. That's why you are crying. That's why you say you don't have. But those that are doing it, I have people in this church that are good titers and God is blessing them. When it comes, every day I also bless, pray for them, I bless them. Lord, you must increase this man. Lord, you must increase this family. Because at times, not because they have, but because they know that this is the principle. Some of us, we are under oppression because we fail to obey these principles. The devil will attack us because God cannot defend us. Someone says, when you give, he says, it's as if you are, God gave you is what that gave you. And in turn, you are putting it back in God's hand. God will say, eh, you gave me again. Okay, God will now add to it and give it in your hand. You are giving him back. It's just like when you give something, food to your children, and you say, give me. <coughs> when you say, give me, and your son gave you that thing. When you are going to give him back, are you going to give it the same amount? No. But when you say give me, I say, mm -hmm, no, 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 mommy, I won't give you. Eh? And he said, mommy, I won't give you. I won't give you. A goat was coming behind. And the bread that you say, give me, I won't give you. The goat coming behind and not, who what? Took the bread from, from the, uh -huh. Where will he run to again? He run back to mommy. Mommy, mommy, mommy. What will you say? When I ask you to give it to me, do you give me? Go and be eating that one. And if the mother will be merciful, he can just give him little, small. But if he has given that one, he will give him more. So it's a principle. God cannot take from you and will not give you back. And you know, as they say, you can't have your, you can't eat your cake and have it. So let's make, let's make sure that we are following this principle. An opportunity is coming today right now for us to give Tony, our family Thanksgiving. We are going to say how we are going to do it. And we are, with your giving or with your not giving, the work of God is do what? He's going. God will do his work. Number 15, lack of appreciation can hold your destiny down, can hold your glory down. Luke chapter 17, verse 12 to 15. Luke 17, 12 to 15. And as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourself to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. In a, with a loud voice, glorified God. Ha! Ah, one out of ten. Glorified God. Listen to me. When God helps you, when God blesses you, when you receive blessing from God, what did you do? What did you do? Many of us don't know how to appreciate God. You even think God, God has not done enough. Do you know that every day of our life we have cause to praise God? Any situation, any circumstances, please give him praise. Thank him. So whenever God helps you, whenever he shows you favor, give him praise. Even you waking up every morning, why can't you praise him? That you can even take, take a step this morning and you are not feeling any pain. You can carry your hand. Ha! I've told us one, one, uh, there was a time that to carry my leg, I woke up in the morning and I got up from the bed. And to carry this leg, I was feeling pain. I said, ha! Serious pain! That was the day I knew the importance of me waking up and carrying my two legs. I entered, I dragged myself to enter the car. When I got down, I said, ha! Mommy, this pain is sits there. I have pain throughout that day. Until God delivered me. I was seeing people that are walking majestically. I said, ha! 
Look at people walking. They don't have pain. But me, I've stepped down and we're having pain. But you, you don't appreciate God for that. The force of thanksgiving must be in place at all times. When you appreciate God, you get him committed to do more. You get him committed to do more. It's just when you appreciate somebody that blesses you, that person will know that this one, I will do more. So if you don't know how to give thanks to God, you don't know how to appreciate people that makes things happen for you, then you will be held down. You say, this one is an ingrid. Don't help him. You don't know how to appreciate people. Some of us, you even say that, what has he done? What has he even done that he want to kill me? Eh? Has he built house for me? Somebody said, I want to help my friend. And I look, what can I do to help this, my friend, do? Ah, my friend don't have a car. So he bought a brand new car for his friend. Bought a brand new car for his friend. Say, ah, thinking that he has done something that his, his friend did not say thank you. He don't say thank you. So now call his friend. Ah, ah. You cannot even say thank you for buying you this car. He say, did I ask you to buy a car for me? Did you ask me what I want? Why can't you ask me what I want before buying it for me? Is that a good answer? That, the man said he nearly collapsed. Said, since that day, since that day, to even do good to some people, you will remember what that man said. So when you are in great, it has debarred some people from getting blessing. He said, did you ask for a car? He said, why don't you tell me when I gave you the car that you don't want a car? Oh, eh? maybe you bought it. If you don't want the car, why can't you sell the car and use the money to do what you want? Number 16. Going back to Egypt for help. Going back to Egypt for help. Isaiah chapter 31, verse 1 to 3. Going back to Egypt for help is that when you are looking help from other means, say, what to those who go down to Egypt for help? And rely on horses who trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But you do not look unto the only one of Israel to seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his word. But we arise against the house of evildoer and against the help of those who walk in iniquity. Verse 3. Now the Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, both he who helps will fall, and he who is helped will fall down. They all will perish together. So don't go to Egypt. Don't go for help outside God. Stay with God. Stay with God. It is in only God that you can receive help. Don't go to Babalawo. Don't go to any other means. Don't go to anybody that says he can help you. Don't say you have been praying. Prayer did not do it. Let me tell you, what prayer cannot do has not exist. You just have to wait. God answers prayer. But he will tell you, wait. I will do it. So don't because of you want to get wealth. You want to do this. You want to be that. And you started looking for means. Say, by fire, fire, force, I must make it. By fire, fire, force, I must get money. No. Allow God to make you. Allow God to raise you. Don't put your destiny in the hand of men. Don't look unto men. He said, those that are help and those that help them will fall together. Because those people, they are men. So, when you focus on man and not God, you are not helping yourself. And I may tell you, man has no solution. The devil has no solution. They will only add to you. They will add. Ask people that are going to the devil for solution. They will tell you that they will give them one solution and add them problem to them. Ask them to remove headache. They will give you cancer. Free gift. Which one is, which one is deadly? Cancer or headache? Hmm. <clears throat> And especially some people go to sorcerers, some people go to these white garment churches. Ah! Somebody say, ah! These garment churches, they have solution. Fast, 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 fast. They have solution. Ask them to go and bring this. Go and bring that. Rituals. 
And is that, is that God? Reach us. I want to pray for someone. If you have been going down to Egypt for help today, may the Lord call you back. Amen. And I pray for you. You won't go to Egypt. Amen. Grace to wait on God. And your blessing will come at the right time. May you receive in the name Amen. of Jesus. Number 17 is backsliding. This one is a serious case. Backsliding. People that turn back, that go back to the world. The Bible says anyone that lays his hand on the floor and look back is not worthy for the kingdom. So you must not look back. You must not go back to the sin. What you say you are not doing, don't go back and pick it up. Some of us, we are not, we are smoking before. But another problem came, you said you go back, you are taking your, your, your secret. So you must not backslide. Don't go back to the world. Let's look at what John chapter 5 verse 14 says. John chapter 5 verse 14. Afterward, Jesus find him in the temple and said to him, Behold, thou hast made old, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Jesus said to them, Don't go there again, because if you go, worse thing will come. Many of us will invite worse thing into our life because we backslide. So when a Christian goes back to hold sin, his old life, then the old problem will come multiplied multiply. That's why you must remain in God. Don't go back. You have known this way. Don't turn back. Don't turn back. Because it is dangerous for you to look back. In this mission, in this uh, walk, in this race, you have to be looking front. You don't look back. You look front. No matter what's happening to you, you will focus on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. You have money. You look back. You don't look back. You have no money. You have food. You have clothes. You are focused. You don't look back. In the race of life, marathon race, if people are running and they are looking back as you are running, what will happen to them? Eventually, they will fall. They can't make it. But don't look at people behind you. Just focus on the race, on the, on the line. Then you will make it. I want to pray for everyone. One way or the other, you have backslide. May the Lord bring you back. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And everyone that is standing, I pray for you, you will not backslide. Amen. There is nothing in the world. The world is nothing. Go and ask people that have tried the world. They will tell you there is nothing there. It's dead. So remain in Christ. Number 18. What can make people to be held down is what I call partial deliverance. Partial deliverance. Partial is deliverance is when you don't allow God to touch the root of your problem. Only the branches was cut off. Then the problem will come up. When you don't pray to the extent that you are delivered completely. Many of us don't open up totally. You say, Pastor, pray for me. And Pastor cannot know anything. He cannot know everything. Just expose, Pastor, I want you to pray for me in this area. This is my problem. You don't, add, don't hide anything from your pastor if you want total deliverance. Just like you're going to the doctor and the doctor is asking you, what's wrong with you? Say, doctor, just treat me. I just want treatment. You are a doctor. And he said, what's wrong with you? Say, I don't know. That means you are ready to do what? To die. Because if it, it can give you ejection that will trigger another thing in your body. But when you say, doctor, this is what I'm feeling in my head, in my chest, in my back. He can ask you to go and do tests. Why do you ask you to go and do tests or x-ray? Because when you even say you don't know what is there, so that test will bring it out. So you know what to apply. But some of us, we just tell you, I just want you to pray for me. You don't open up. And you know what is wrong with you. Even when you want to come for counseling, you can't even open up yourself. And counseling is going to help you because, Pastor, this is my problem. I'm having this area. Please help me. And go. We step in because you open up. They know the right prayer to pray for you. And some of us, we don't pray. Prayer that reach the root of our problem. We just want one magic. Somebody to lay on. Somebody to just do one abracadabra. Just want that. You want someone to call your name. 
pour oil on you, pour water on you, and you. No, that is not how to do it. You must pray to the extent that you, you know that you are delivered. When you feel that you are not yet delivered, don't stop. Tell the pastor, I'm not yet delivered. I still have this issue. This thing is still there. And you will pray more. I pray for everyone that your deliverance is not total. That as you are here today, your deliverance will be total. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yoruba have an adage. You know about ton la show. Again, you can you in ton the corner. That is, when you see have lice, you know lice takes blood. When you see have lice in your body, until you kill that lice, you see be having blood. You know somebody that have lice. When you have lice on your head or your clothes, you bring it out, you kill it, bam. You kill around. You can those. That's what. You, so if you don't kill that lice, you still be having issue. Today, the Lord will deliver you completely. Amen. Number 19. A lot of people have been held down. Their glory is not manifested because they have demonic possession in their hands. Possession of demonic materials. Possession of demonic materials. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26. The Bible says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord, Thy God, for the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all that are upon the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 7 26. God has said, You are a holy people unto him, separated. So you must not allow any ungodly materials to be found in your hands on demonic materials. Out of Apostles chapter 19, verse 18. To 20, Acts 19, 18 to 20. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also used curious art, brought their books together and burned them before all the men, and they counted the price of them, and they found in 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word, and God and the word of God word prevailed. Why? Because these people they brought all their shams, they drop it. Many of us, we have our cost materials, evil materials in our, in, our, in our rooms. You enter into some people's house. What they used to decorate their house is nude pictures. It's masquerade. It's the image of some images that are supposed to be found. So, why many people are victim of oppression? Victim of glory held down is because they have these accursed things in their house. Satanic chains, satanic rings, bangles, amulets, some decorative materials that are not glorifying God. Yes, tattoos. Some of you love tattoo tattoos and go and read the Bible. Say, don't put tattoos on your body. Some people will be hanging occultic materials. Say, somebody gave it to him or to her. Some people are using occultic book. Six and seven books of Moses. They have them. Some people have some effigy. They say it's their grandfather that gave it to them. And it's in your house. So you must make sure that you burn those things. Some people say, they, they say I should be putting it on my head before sleeping. Under my pillow. No. All those are causing you must throw them away. Because they will be inviting demons to your house. If there is any accosting in your life, in your home. Let it be born by fire. Amen. So the one you must throw away, please go and throw it away because it's not helping you. That amulet, throw it away. When my father, my daddy, gave his life to Jesus, he normally have those things in his possession. Hamlet, the one we put in the in uh, his waist. Yes, in his waist. If anything wants to happen, my father is, uh, is going now. He wants to go to that junction. If there are going to be riot in that place, anything deadly is going to happen to that uh, amulet in his waist will turn to snake and come and bite him here. When he was going and he's not taking caution. Say, you, don't you hear? He will do like this. The thing will go back. That's how he was into this fetty something. But when I gave my life to Jesus, he, now say, he normally put incision on us. I said, Daddy, don't put this incision on me again. One day he said, I'm going to put it on you. I'm your father. So as he put the first blade, I've told us several times, on my head, blood started coming out from my head. Non-stop. And I was bathed with blood. 
He now said, Jesus, oh, I will not do it again. Jesus, help me. The blood stopped. That was the day by my father and sob. Ah, this thing is not work. This boy, you not kill me. And he threw away everything. He buried it. He buried it. The next day, he said, let me go and see what I buried. They have disappeared. So remove all those accursed because they will not help you. And he now said, there is power in Jesus. There is power in Jesus. No other power like him. The last thing I'm going to talk before we pray, unbelief and prayerlessness can make your growth to be held down. Many of us don't believe in prayers. Some of us that even prayed, you don't pray more. You are prayerless. Many people don't even pray at all. Jesus in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, Luke 18 1 says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. The reality of life is that you must pray until something happens. You pray. The happiest man on earth, they are Christian. The happiest man on earth, they are Christian that prays. Because the more you pray, the more you get victory. One victory will take you to another victory. And you know that that victory is not yet guaranteed if you relax. So you pray so that your victory will not be hijacked. Some people pray today, they have breakthrough. They forgot about prayer. When another problem comes, they started praying. No, you continue to pray. Maintain your, your, your deliverance. Maintain your life through prayers. Prayers give us victory and it maintains our victory. But when you stop praying, then your problem will come back again. Your victory will not be maintained. So you pray every day without fainting. And I pray for someone today that you will no more be prayerless. Amen. Amen. Someone said, the devil don't fear anyone, but he fears you when you are on your knees. When you are on your knees. Anytime you feel that, ah, I need God. I need God intervention. You go to pray. Anytime you see God blessing you, pray. Ah, this blessing that is come, let me continue to pray. Anytime you see an attack, pray. Anytime you see joy, Blessings, pray. And when you pray, you must believe. Don't say, ah, maybe you are expecting the things to happen automatically. Has not happened. Don't say, ah, God has not done it. Just believe he has done it. And if there is delay, you have to pray. Lord, remove delay. When this guy, Daniel, was praying, Daniel prayed. How many times in the day? Three times. He was praying. For a resort, he didn't get it and was there still praying for 21 days. God, if you don't ask Sammy, I will not go. Many of us, we pray shuke shukeli. Have you heard that English before? Go and look inside the dictionary. Shuke shukeli. That is the prayer that you pray that you don't pray very well to the root. Some of us who have never prayed and you sweat. Some of us, when they say pray, even in the church, Shout! You will not shout. You will just be looking at people. As if you are the God that answers our prayer. When you're supposed to pray, and people say, ah, ah, what's wrong with you? Pray and scatter everywhere. That is where you get results. I remember when I was passing through some issues, and I was invited to a church to come and preach there. They didn't know that me too, there was a guest speaker. I have issue. That I need prayer. When the pastor throws a prayer like this, that I handle that prayer, I scatter the They were looking at me. They come and hold me. Pastor, please, this church is not strong. But the way you are shaking the pole, this church will fall down. I said, I don't know that I'm holding your pole. Do you know? That was when the, I saw the problem last. I didn't see the problem again. But you, you will not pray. I will say how you are going to pray right now. Right to your feet. I, I read about a man, a PhD holder in mass communication. He died on the downhill somewhere in, in Lagos here in Nigeria. He died with his greatness, a PhD holder. Ah, you will not die like that in the name of Jesus. Someone was a class, first class citizen. But what is he doing with his first class? He was driving taxi. Another one, he was a mortuary cleaner. Ha! What a... <laughs> In abroad, mortuary cleaner, that was a glory tied down. I want to pray for you. Wherever your glory has been tied down, 
Today you will be released. Amen. You will be released. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody that's supposed to be employers of labor is now a messenger. A born industrial, a, a do, industrialist. Because he's now working as a messenger in the bank. His glory was held down. Someone was born healthy by someone. He was born by wealthy people. But he never see money. He was suffering. He was begging to, to eat with all the wealth his father has. Somebody you are going to pray. Say, oh Lord, my father. Oh Lord, my father. Every power. Every power. Hold me down. Hold me down. Your time is Your up. Time is As up. I clap my hand. Release, release, release me. Let me go. 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 Release me. Pray very well. Release In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to pray very well. Somebody sent a pastor sent a clip to me. And I, I don't normally open video clip on my WhatsApp. When I said a minute exercise you can do that will solve a lot of problem. I say, a minute, let me hear it. And when I heard it, he said that a, the person is an India, a doctor of India. He said, exercise you can do for two minutes and you is going to cure hypertension, diabetes, and some other ailments. He said, this one exercise. What's the exercise? Say, clapping, clapping, clapping of hands. And he said, it's not the hands you will clap like this. He said, you clap it like this. He said, if you can clap like this for two minutes, if there is hypertension, if there is diabetes or anything, I say it will go. So when you are clapping, it's what? It's spiritual. Someone said, say, as I clap, and you'll be shaking his head. You say, what kind of clapping that pastor has also clap? If I don't clap, we've got no answer. Me. It was even in the scripture, say, clap your hand, stop your feet. Somebody, you are going to repeat that prayer. Say, powers. Powers. Foundation. From my foundation. Hold me down. Hold me down. Your time is Your up. Your time is As up. I clap my hand. Release me. Let me go. Release me. Let me go. In the name of Jesus. Let me go. Release me. Let me go. Release me. Let me go. Oh, yes. Release me. In the name of Jesus. Release me. Oh, yes. Let me go. Release me. 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 Let me go. Let me go. Release me. Let me go. Release me. Let me go. Let me go. Release me. Yes. Release me. Let me go. 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 That make behind it. Anytime you step out to do something, something is just drawing you back. Or you just find that you are being frustrated at all time. You know that you don't like your situation. You are tired of the valley. I want you to pray. Somebody, what you are going to pray, you are going to pray with enough is enough spirit. You are going, enough of this mess. Enough of this suffering. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Holy Ghost, are I so enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Ah. Holy Ghost, are I so enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Holy Ghost, are I so enough is enough. Enough is enough. Pray. Enough is enough. Holy Ghost, are I so enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Holy Ghost, are I so enough is enough. Holy Ghost, are I so enough? Is enough. Holy Ghost, are I so enough? Is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Ah, Aka Tata, Eta, 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 Eta,
The Lord asked me to tell someone you must pray very well this morning. He said, in your family, no one is really doing well in your entire family. He can't wake up one. No one is really doing well. But God said he wants to raise you up. Amen. In that family. Amen. It's like it's a taboo in your family for someone to be great. But he says if you pray very well, you'll feel the first great person. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord says someone you are experiencing chronic delay. That delay is not from God. That delay will be broken today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There's someone that needs power to rise and shine. Above anyone in their family, the power is ready available unto you in the Amen. name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 49, Isaiah 49, verse 24 to 26. He says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive be delivered? Say, but I but the Lord says, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with what those that contend with you. Hey, everyone contending with you. The Lord will contend with them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, who hold me down? Who hold me down? And my glory. And my glory. Say, oh Lord, arise. Oh Lord, arise. Contend with them. Contend with them. And deliver me. And deliver Open me. your mouth. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Any power holding me down. Who is holding me down? Holy Ghost, arise. Holy Ghost, arise. Holy Ghost, arise. And release me. Release me. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, release me. Release my glory. Release my glory. Release my glory. Release my in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. That court that was tied down, who lose him? Jesus. Jesus lose him. Did he, did, he, did he lose himself? You can't lose yourself. You can't deliver yourself. You need higher power to release you. Somebody, today is your day of deliverance. Amen. Holy Ghost fire. Set me free, 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Set me free. Holy Ghost. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are was I tied down. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. that place. Locate that place. And set me free. And set me free. People are yet there. Me want to go to go. We are there. Head me down with my glory. Holy Ghost fire. Locate that place. And set me free. In the name of Jesus. We have been tied with my glory. Holy Ghost fire. Locate the place. And set me free. Set me free. Let me pray. Take one more prayer. Please, tomorrow, don't miss the evening. In, throughout this week, we are going to pray throughout this week. 
6 p.m. Please, I want to, everyone must find yourself here. And if you are not here, maybe because of your job, you are traveling, please make sure you connect online. When you see the link, you must pray very well. I have about 30 prayers that I cannot touch now. If you can't pray this prayer and your glories is still held down. In your family, God will raise up your head. Amen. Above every other one else. Amen. Those that have been looking down on you, they are calling you non-entity. They will look up to you. Amen. Those that say, can this one rise? Can this one be somebody in life? They will see you rising and shining. Amen. And they will regret. Ah, if we know, we'll have treated you well. If you know this is what is going to, God is going to do in your life, they are looking at you, calling you useless, calling you good for nothing. But very soon, they will see that you are the glory of their family. Amen. This is the last prayer before we continue tomorrow evening. Everyone, make sure you are part of it. Say, power to rise and shine. Power to rise and shine. Above anyone in my generation. Above anyone in my generation. My life is available. My life is available. Power to make it big. Power to make it big. Above my colleagues. Power never to be on the ground. Power never to be on the ground. Power to be on the top. I am available. Say in the name of Jesus. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Aha. In the name of Jesus. Follow me. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Yes, follow me. In the name of Jesus, follow me. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Say, hands to what is utter everyone. I pray for you today. Power all day you down from your foundation. Let them release you now. From any secret fault holding you down, you are delivered. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From that repeated oppression, let the Lord deliver you. Amen. From chronic backwardness, you are delivered. Amen. I pray for you that habit, that character in you that make people to run away from you, that character in you that is killing your glory as you roar three amen. Let that habit and character go out of your life. Amen. 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 Hey, man, in Jesus' name. I pray for someone. We can embargo place upon you. Limitation place upon you. Let it be lifted in the name of Jesus. Amen. That frustration, that unresolved problem, let them give way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every restriction on your life, I break it now. I break it now. No more manifestation for fulfillment. No more suffering. No more delay. No more backwardness. No more failure. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever is called difficulty and hardship in your life, let them give way today. Amen. You are released. Amen. Go and make it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That affliction hence. Amen. That pain hence. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Go and fulfill your purpose. Amen. Fulfill your destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your marriage will have joy. Amen. Your family will have joy. Amen. In the name of Jesus, as, edu as a student, you will have joy. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I pray for you in your village, in your town, where you came from, you will be the glory of that place. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Say to let somebody shout three powerful hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Love for Jesus, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Can we measure? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So this is part three of Glory Held Down. Make sure you look, you watch the part one. Listen to part one, part two, and part three. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to give our offering. After this is the family thanksgiving. You have been giving it envelope. Just write the name of your family at that white envelope. But now, what I'm taking is your offering. Your tithe, your offering. Everyone watching us online, you must give generously. You see, about giving, I don't need to be telling us, quoting scripture again. You should know that you have heard the word. It's a principle. You just do it to your God, to your maker. And see if we not surprise you. I am a personal testimony. I've given you my own testimony this morning. And I'm still going to share another testimony. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Everyone given this morning your tithe, rise to your feet with your tithe, rise to your feet with your offering. I bless you with the blessing of the Most High God. As you are giving to your God, let the Lord multiply your giving. Give you more than enough. Amen. I see somebody overflowing blessing. Amen. Overflowing miracle. Amen. Signs and wonders. Amen. It is your season. Amen. Everyone giving online as you are making your transfer. Let the Lord bless you beyond your comprehension. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Financial prosperity Amen. is your portion. Amen. You will never lack. Amen. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. I have a living God, oh, every living body, no. Say not you, David. I have a living God, oh, I have a living God, oh, no. Say not true, oh, not true, not true, not true. I have a living God, oh, every body, no. Say not you, David. Oh, Jehovah, now you, David. Now you, David, radio. Hey, give me praise and dance. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. I want this third hallelujah to be thunderous and let all the heaven know that someone is praising God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.